All right. So in case I missed someone, Alec, I'll wait. All right. You know, I think the most appropriate way to start out the course. Well, first off, Physics 151 on Dr. George Fox. If you take notes on your computer, then that's fine. But if you don't take notes on your computer, I would like them to be closed. So, thank you. And for this first thing, you won't need a computer. I'm gonna give you a pre-course assessment. Please do not write on these. If there are marks on it, please definitely don't trust any mark to be correct or not. Um, if there are marks on it, just let me know when we handed it. I would like the answers on a separate sheet of paper. Please put your name on the separate sheet of paper. And the name you put on the paper should be the name you want me to call you. So I know I've got the official, what the state says your name is but then there's also your actual name. I want that you go by, so. That's the one I want. Uh, this is not the entire class, so this should take 45 minutes or so. At which point then we will talk about some introductory things and what's happening tomorrow. This is not for grade. I'll start out with the easy one first. Without a calculator, what's the answer? Over 10,000. Yeah. You get an exact answer, actually. Is that Gilly? Is that a hand? Okay. Oh, Tony, about to say something? things. Here's, here's how you solve the problem. None. Nothing wrong with improper fractions. Putting things into mixed numbers. There occasionally, which it's a decent idea, but usually improper fractions good enough. All right, so over there, the one that I've had on the board a little bit longer. That equation is not a physics equation. It, this would be the last time you see it potentially. So what's wrong with it? So if it's, 
the fraction of human civilization that's reached posthuman. It's those things over themselves, which doesn't that cancel each other out? And then it just, the fraction of human beings observed living in the simulation is just one. Uh, oh, as in that cancels out with that? Yeah. The, that plus one but doesn't allow you to do it. Oh. I mean, four over four plus one is 0.8. Oh, that, okay. That's illegitimate math. Yeah. Sometimes you will see on papers something like that, not how math works. Okay. <laughs> Take a look at units. So we're talking about a fraction here. What would you guess the units of the fraction are? One over something. What would the something be? If I said, what's the fraction of people in here who are who wear glasses? Then you count the number of people in the classroom. Okay, so we got uh, there's 12 of us in here, so one, two, three, four. So there's four with classes. So what would the fraction be? Four over 12, or something like one third. If you want, okay. Or for the decimal fans over there, uh, 0.3 repeating. What are the units? How'd you get that? I heard a voice, but I didn't see who said it. You count people. You just count people. All right. So what did you divide? The total amount, like in the area of what you're counting. As, uh, that's where the four is coming from. The four is how many people are wearing glasses. Or okay. So what are the units people? of the four? People. people okay. What are the units of the twelve? Everybody else. Yeah. Everybody else. Like it's the same. It, the four people is just people who are have something else that separates them from the whole twelve. Okay. So the units of the four is people. The units of the twelve is people. So if I do four people divided by twelve people, you get you get four of twelve people. All right. So let's take a look at that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Remembering some of it. So if I have five meters divided by two meters, the units is meters. So if I have five x divided by two x, the unit is x. Five x divided by two x is equal to something to x. Uh, <laughs> but then we see the x's. Yeah, all right, so it's 2.5 over here. 2.5, the meters cancel out. You can treat a meter like a factor, or the unit as a factor. That's a point, decimal point there. So if I have four people divided by 12 people, people cancel out. All right, so the units of the fraction? Number. Oh, sure. I was going to go with unit list, but we can go with that too. All right, so that has no units. So all the fractions have no units at all. What about the units of this n sub s, n bar sub s? What is the bar? That's the, uh, the bar means average. So it's average number of simulations run by interested civilizations. But well, that's unit list as well. It's just a number, no? No, it's, it's not just a number. Oh. I'm potentially awarded it to find it slightly long 
but the, the spirit of what I intended. Uh, the units would be simulation lots. So we have some fraction times some fraction times simulation lots. Down here, we have some number, some, some unitless, unitless simulation runs. So what's the unit of this whole thing? Simulation. And what's the unit of one? Unitless. So if I take something with the units and add one to it, what do I get? Well, it's just, it's just that thing plus one. Yeah. So, this has no units. Up here, the total thing has units of simulation runs, and down here we have simulations runs plus one. The only way this would work is if the units canceled out over here, and they don't, because this equation cannot be legitimate. This equation comes from uh, Nick Bostrom, who's a philosophy professor somewhere, I forget where, who came out with the idea that probability, that there's a likelihood that we're living in a simulation right now, and this was a major equation that he had there, which is completely wrong. So about 10 years later, he came out with the, basically rationalized it some other way, came out with a new equation. But the fact that no one caught it for 10 years means that scientists weren't actually reading the paper. So I guess a couple morals of the story here. One, units matter. Two, please be careful that uh, the units will work out. A lot of the things that we're gonna be doing as we work through, and we're not probably gonna track units as we go if we're dealing with a standard unit system. So we'll probably be dealing with the international standards and as long as we're dealing with that, we should be fine in the end and we can know, oh, it's time, it's got to be seconds. But if you start dealing with bizarre units, kind of like that, you need to be very careful to keep track of your units. Questions up to here before I erase anything? So from here, my office is, if you walk down the hallway, there's going to be a small little hallway off to the right just after the classroom that's on the other side of this wall. And you walk down that hall, it's the door on the left. It's the only office that's down that little corridor. Corridor, that's the word I was looking for earlier. All I could think of was alley. My phone number, it's on the syllabus, it should be correct. I think the extension is 3376, but I always have to look that up. Oh, I did not mean to erase that. Oh, well. Uh, who here has had right triangle trig? All right, so it was like about five and a half people. Some people were not particularly confident. If you have free job trade, you, you've got more trade than you need for the course. If, I'm thinking that the next course. <laughs> okay. The next yeah, the, the, geom the trick that's required for this course is stuff that I got in geometry. But oh, who's had geometry? Well, it used to be everyone took it, but now it's not so much. Is Calc 2? Like, does that cover more than it Oh, Calc 2? Yeah, absolutely. Hmm. And so the calculus students in here? So I guess we got. Okay. Uh, we do have a wide variety of math backgrounds here. So having had trig before the course is not required anymore. Uh, so if you've gone way past that, so you've got two students, then just sort of bear with some of this stuff. Uh, don't tune out completely because before, by the time you tune back in, we might have covered stuff that you haven't seen before. It depends on how much of a risk you want to take in life.
All right, so let's start out with a circle. A radius is equal to one. Uh, we'll just keep it generic for right now. What's the area of a circle? Pi. Pi r squared. Turks not two pi r. We got our two equations here. We got those are the two basic equations. I think most people have been exposed to. If you've never seen pi r squared or two pi r before, education has changed a great deal since I was in it. It's only been a couple of decades, so. What could possibly have changed? How do you know that the pi r squared is area and the other one, what is the other one? Circumference. Okay, circumference. Uh, how do you know one's, which one is area and which one's circumference? Ooh, you went too far. One word too many. You wanna try again? Tell me what to fill in. What, how do you know one that one's area and that one's circumference? Besides the fact that it's written on the board that way, the radius of being squared. Yes, you said square root. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, squared. Area deals with a surface. It's two dimensional. So I've got to be multiple. I've got to have, well, in essence, two units there. I have to have something that is multiplied by one variable multiplied by another variable. And here I've only got one variable. This is linear. Now let's make it more specific. Let's make it a unit circle. For those who are not familiar, a unit circle just means a circle with a radius of one. This is some angle theta. This line right here intersects the circle at some point. That point there is the cosine of the angle and the other one is the sine of the angle. If you've never seen trig before, these are trig functions. A central cosine of theta, theta is the Greek letter, and this is the sine of theta. This is sort of to give some sort of visualization. So if this is zero degrees, because the math people said so, we have to live with it. This is zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270 degrees, 360 degrees. You can keep going if you want. Or go in the other direction. So the positive angles go counterclockwise, the negative angles go, excuse me, go clockwise. So this is negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270 degrees negative 360, so I guess that's plus or minus 360 degrees. We'll be dealing primarily with degrees in terms of angle until later on in the course when we'll switch to radians. So let's talk briefly about radians. We'll come back to it, uh, later, but what's a radian? Currently abbreviated as rad. It's like pi over 180. There's like there's an equation to convert something like the degrees to radian. Okay. What is a radian? <laughs> All right. So pi over 180. What is that? I think that's converting the a, a degree to a radian. Is he right? <laughs> my confidence there. Someone's got your back. Yep. He said it, it must be true. Is that, that I assume that was meant by the sure. <laughs> You're not sure? Well is it the number of revolutions? Number of if I go around a circle once that would be one revolution. Okay. Alright, so let's uh, let's talk about that for a second. So one revolution.
is equal to 360 degrees. How many radians is that? Two. 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 I, I'm hearing two, but I'm missing something else. Two radians. Thank you. There's a pi in there. Still doesn't explain what a radian is, but it's just, from a practical point of view, a radian is just another unit for angle. Just like revolution is degree, which I'm assuming all of you are somewhat familiar with, radian is just another unit of it. Where's 360 degrees come from? Or from where does 360 degrees come from? Why 360? Whom do we think? All right, start. No, well before that. Some Greek guy. Some Greek guy. Uh, actually, not the Greeks. Some Arab guy. Uh, I think they would disagree with that. Babylonians. Okay. We can thank the Babylonians for that. Why? Well. Babylonians realized there was something special about 60, and there is something special about 60. What's special about the number 60 from a current point of view is that it's divisible by a whole lot of stuff. It's divisible by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60. It's divisible by a bunch of numbers, so it actually has some convenience math-wise. They had a basic 60 system that was that important to them. So they recognized that 60 was very important. So if I take another, what seems to be a pure math thing, if I take an equilateral triangle, all the sides are equal, all the angles are equal, so we were in Euclidean space. And let's go ahead and marry the two. We'll just say that that's 60, that's 60, and that's 60. You don't have to assign any units at this point in history. Now, if I take six equilateral triangles of the same size, and I put them together, they form a nice, complete wedge right there. And I have a hexagon. 